Welcome back to Upside Down Data. Let's talk about NEAR. So if you're not familiar, NEAR is a layer one blockchain. That means that decentralized applications can build on top of it. It can leverage smart contracts. And there's also more to NEAR than just that. It's quite fast, it's quite scalable, more so than something like Ethereum, for example, being an alternative prominent example of a layer one blockchain. And NEAR also took the step of joining the likes of Celestia, for example, in competing for the data availability space, the big data availability market. So this, if you're not familiar, really has to do with the layer two protocols that are building on top of Ethereum. Basically, they leverage the security of Ethereum, but they're a lot faster and more scalable, but they need a place to park their data. And it had been the case for a long time that Ethereum was quite expensive to do that. And so you had protocols like Celestia spin up where the sole purpose of a protocol like Celestia was to provide that data availability service for those layer twos. And so Near actually ended up joining the fray. They threw their hat in the ring and said that we can also provide data availability at a cheaper rate. Now, more recently, Ethereum had an upgrade that introduced blobs, if you've heard of that term before. And blobs are really just something that helps Ethereum handle data in a more efficient way and makes it cheaper for layer twos to use Ethereum for that data availability. So certainly a competitive marketplace, but it would not surprise me at all if part of this appreciation of the NEAR token that we've seen is at least in part due to that narrative fit, where NEAR is not just sticking to the same old, same old of being a fast scalable layer one, which there are many others, for example, Solana and others, but it's also throwing its hat into the ring of other markets. And so it's possible that the broader market saw NEAR doing this and rewarded it for that, at least in a more speculative narrative fit type of way. And certainly Nier has been doing quite well. If we just look from October of 23 all the way up to where we are right now, it's about 613% up from that point. Quite nice, quite a bit better than a lot of other layer ones, for example, that are competing. Not all, but a number of other ones. So let's go ahead now and talk a little bit more about where Nier sits on some other metrics and then what some of our models here at the channel are seeing and where they think Nier might be heading next. So the first thing I want to talk about is where Near sits in terms of DeFi. So I'm over here on DeFi Llama, which has a really nice breakdown of chain by chain. Where do they stand in terms of the dollar amount that is in their DeFi ecosystem? DeFi, if you're not familiar, decentralized finance. And we see that Near sits at number 22. So not the top of the list, but certainly not the bottom. And if we go ahead and just look at the internals of this, we can see that it's currently up around 305 million is where it stands in terms of total value locked. And we can see that if we just look at the ecosystem, it has a pretty good variety of different protocols in its DeFi ecosystem. It has lending protocols, liquid staking, decentralized exchanges, so on and so forth. But maybe one of the more interesting metrics we can see here is revenue that NIR is generating. This is basically income coming from things like transaction fees, so on and so forth. And you can see is that on a sustained level, it's actually higher now than it was even at the height of last cycle, suggesting that Near is getting a pretty good amount of usage and it's actually maybe outstripping what it was seeing at the height that it saw last cycle. So that's a good sign. Now it is important to note that $50,000 a day at the peak here is certainly not nothing, but if you compare that to something like Ethereum, which was at the peak up over 30 million, or even Solana, which is getting well into the millions here, multiple millions a day that it was generating, Near still certainly has a ways to go on a relative basis to other protocols to get up to parity. But we'd also kind of expect this. Near is a significantly lower market cap asset than Ethereum or Solana. So it makes sense that's not getting quite as much use. But I think the hope would be that any Near bull would like to see this continue to go up and that might warrant a higher and higher market cap for the asset, or at least give the speculative narrative there to be able to drive prices higher. So that's in kind of where near stands right now. I think it's still one where a lot of its price appreciation probably is more from narrative and speculation from it getting into markets like data availability and with it being able to see some robust uh, increase in growth. But certainly we'd like to see more of that to see it continue to advance on a more fundamental level. Okay, so that is what I wanted to talk about with DeFi. Let's now flip over to what some of our models are seeing about Near and where they think it might be heading next. So I'm gonna show you first is our short-term risk model, our short-term upside downside potential indicator. Basically higher values mean higher risk, lower values mean lower risk. And you see this model does a really fantastic job of navigating the Near market. You can see that it gets up to these high levels of risk at the top of last cycle, then really low levels down at the bottom and then again, as we went into this intermediate peak, really got up super high here. We then had a big correction. It cooled all the way back down. 
and then we had another big rally up and then cooled way off again. So this has been a very useful model to watch with near in this cycle. It's really nailed these tops and these bottoms and really helped identify when the short term upside potential has gotten exhausted and then downside potential is a more likely direction. And then vice versa, when the downside potential has gotten largely exhausted and when a rally might be likely to start again. So it's been a very useful model. And we can see that it's cooled off once again. We had this big rally, got all the way up to the top of the scale here as we topped out. We then cooled off a lot on short-term risk, and it looks like we might be setting the stage for that next leg up. So we'll have to watch and see how things play out, but certainly the stage is set that if Nier wants to run, it now has a lot of realistic short-term upside potential, certainly a lot more than it had back over here in mid-March. So another model we can watch to give a better idea of when is that rally really about to kick off is our trend confidence indicator or TCI. So this model is all about trend and telling us should we be confident or believing in a given trend that we're seeing. So the way that you can read this model is how is it moving relative to price? You see the TCI really start to aggressively trend up, then price will often and then follow. But if you see it start to really aggressively trend down, that might suggest that whatever rally you were in is now likely over and a correction is likely to follow. If we just zoom in on more recent price action, we can see that play out. You know, we see the TCI start to move up through here. Price moves up, TCI moved down, correction happens, an aggressive reversal on the TCI as price then follows, moves up, and then the TCI moving down, price corrects. So what we'd like to see now is the TCI start to again aggressively move up. If we see this uptrend that started to form here continue and really start to break above this kind of downward trend we've seen here and continue up, that would be a suggestion that maybe that next leg is forming to start realizing some of that short-term upside potential that we know is there for near based on the short-term UDPI. So, so far, so good. I'd like to see a little bit more confirmation before I personally get too excited yet, but I think we're starting in the right direction. If we see this really break off further, then I'll think that a continuation here is probably in the cards. So another model then that we can look at in the longer term, medium to longer term, these were kind of more short term considerations I was talking about is our forecast model. And what this model tells us is what is the probability that prices will be higher than they are right now, six months in the future. So for example, if you see a value like 0.73, that's it saying that there's a 73% chance that prices will be higher in six months than they are right now. Whereas if you see a value like 0.06, that's saying there's only a 6% chance that prices will be higher than they are right now, six months in the future. And you see this model does a fantastic job of identifying the market conditions for near when to be bullish and the six month outlook will be up versus when to be bearish and the six month outlook is down. And you see it really nailing the bull market and then absolutely nailing the incoming bear market. And then once again, it flipped bullish down through the bottom here, nailed this move up and it remains bullish currently up at 81% chance of upside in six months. So not 100% by any means, but a heck of a lot better than 6%. So when I look at this, it suggests that the long to medium to long term outlook remains bullish for near. And when we look at the shorter term data, it also suggests that a move up in the shorter term is also very much a possibility, especially if we see the trend confidence indicators continue to move up and especially if it moves up more aggressively from here. Now, the one caveat I would say is that this depends on what broader market dynamics do. If we look at, for example, the dollar, which tends to be inversely correlated with crypto, it has been on an uptrend ever since December of 2023. And if it continues moving up, that'd be concerning for not just near, but all of crypto, frankly, that would probably put some pressure on crypto lead to potentially more sell-offs. Likewise, if we see the stock market continue to move down from here, if this is just a short-term relief rally here in a broader downward move, that would also probably put some pressure on crypto and near might make it more difficult for some of the, for example, shorter term moves to play out. But assuming that we don't get any broader market conditions that are extremely aversive to crypto and the broader crypto bull market is very much intact, I do think that a bullish outlook for near remains quite reasonable from here. And the short term, it would not surprise me at all to see some more upside, especially if we see some more confirmation on some of these metrics. So to kind of wrap up on near, I think it sits in an interesting spot where not only is it a layer one protocol, but it's also trying to do interesting things like branch out and data availability, try to tap into that market. Certainly, whatever they've been doing has been working for them. The market has been rewarding these narratives that is starting to fit itself with. And we are seeing an uptick in activity on the network, which is a heartening sign. 
So from a fundamental perspective, I think things are moving in a good direction. Of course, you'd like to see these things continue to play out for that thesis to really be validated. But then even just on a data-driven perspective, it does seem like Near could have more room to move to the upside. So at this point, I think Near certainly a bullish outlook remains reasonable unless we see some broader cataclysmic events start to play out. Obviously not financial advice you should make of these data as you will. That's my current thoughts right now. If you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like, and follow us over on X. A lot of updates about our models and more over there. And go to our website, plurdigital.io, to see live data from our models and more.